Wow. All right, we're back. Green does it here live with Jake Mace. And <laughs> Take two. <laughs> hopefully you guys can hear us this time because we're actually not muted, right? Yeah, so, for all my regular people that are watch, like Craig McDonald, he comes in pretty quick always. Uh, tell me if you can hear us. Yes, please us let us know so we're not just talking to ourselves. So bottom line, we're here. If you've seen Jake's yard or you need to see Jake's yard, I call it a grocery store. Jake, you call it an oasis. I call it an oasis, a grocery store. You called it a refrigerator. Well, my main garden center, I call the fridge. Yes. But my garden, I've, I've named Longevity Gardens just because... Greg um, told you to. Greg told me to name it something. Yes. And um, I used to call my martial art program Phoenix Longevity Arts. Mm -hmm. And I think that gardening for me is all about eating well and eating super healthy to increase your human longevity, which like means it. graceful aging and being strong as you age. So longevity garden. It's a lifestyle. It is, you know, and gardening is a lifestyle. I'm yeah. trying to share the live video right now, which I hope what you guys will do is hit the <laughs> share button for us right now. So we'll show you how to do it. So Jake, tell us what you're doing here. Well, I shared the first one, take one. So I'm just going to copy the same comment. I'm going to delete the first one since it has no sound. And then we're, I'm we're going to... We're getting all kinds of lessons. We're learning how to garden. We're learning lifestyles. We're learning Facebook, technology. I'm going to uh, go to my Urban Gardening in Arizona Facebook group. Okay. We just cracked 6,000 members yesterday. Which I have to say, guys, I'm a part of this group, and it's a great group because people are always posting things that they're gardening and things that they're doing, and you can get questions right there. It's like, what do you need to go uh, to school for, right? Because exactly. you got Jake. Oh. <laughs> well. And everybody else on here. It's What's so great about it, I'll say, is it's a community site. Everybody is putting in and, and helping each other out. That's what it's about. And so if I go to greendesert.org, which is your Facebook page. Right. And I hit the refresh button. I can see us live right now. And I can actually oh, cool. um, see if there's sound. I know. And I can actually... There is oh, sound. We're talking. Sound. <laughs> and so I'm going to hit the share <laughs> button. And I can actually share this with my gardening group. Okay. So we're going to go share in a group. Urban Gardening in Arizona. And I'm just going to repaste what I did earlier. We're going to say take two so folks know it's take two. <laughs> And uh, now everybody will know on my gardening page that we're live. We're live. And what we're going to show, we're going to show today gardeners some gardening 101 tips that they can use yeah. to become great. Right. Yeah. Right I now. mean, bottom line is, is we want you to know everybody can do this. We're going to show you how to do it without stressing yourself out, going crazy, without stressing your wallet out, because that's an issue too. And this is going to save you money. I mean, we have ways to show you how to do some things free. So why don't we start by kind of showing people your grocery store or your oasis? But I, mean, I have a gift for you again. Oh, you have a gift. Oh, I get to again. eat more. Okay, okay. You didn't get any sound last time. <laughs> yeah, okay. So okay. tell us what this is. So these are dates and they were grown here in Arcadia in the Phoenix area. Okay. They were picked just like two days ago by my friend Erica. I just put a video on my vegan athlete YouTube channel on these dates. Okay. And if you want to pick one out of here, these, a lot of times dates are very chewy, um, like chewy caramel, but these ones were picked super ripe and so they're full of moisture content. So they're mm -hmm. really plump and juicy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are Black Sphinx dates. So. They say mm -hmm. there's only one grove mm. of Black Sphinx dates in the world and it's in Arcadia. This is like dessert. This would be the, I think I'm going to gain weight because I'm not going to be able to stop eating. It really is addicting. It's like an apple pie. It is. That's like you delicious. could use this, you could use this as a mm. sweetener instead of sugar. Look at that. And it's, oh, camera guy, I'm going to let you taste. Here you go. Let me tell you, Erica, <laughs> who picks these dates at her house in Phoenix, she has dogs and her dogs eat all dates off the ground and they are as fat as can be. Okay, so this is a date. <laughs> So they're gonna, they're gonna. I would pass that because I don't want to know that because I'm gonna keep eating them. And I would say gonna... more than three a day, and you're gonna be. There's your limit. A little thicker. You're gonna look like a date. <laughs> a little okay. plump and juicy. But right. we, we only had two, so we're, All right, we're good. That's it. Even if we have technical difficulties, let's yeah. show them the actual date tree. If you want to come oh, yeah. around and show them, this is what it looks like. It looks like a palm tree. It is a palm tree. Okay. Um, a lot of palm trees in the Phoenix area are fan palms, which don't really have anything edible on them. But the date palms, I think, are the most important fruit tree for anybody who lives in Southern California or Nevada or Arizona okay. or maybe even Mexico, maybe maybe even New Mexico a little bit. Plant or maybe even Texas or Florida, maybe you can get away with it. Yeah. The date palm wants it hot, and you can plant them, but you want to plant the female ones. Mm -hmm. And so, like we were saying on the first take, <laughs> the female date palms put off the fruits and the flowers, but you need at least one male lingering around somewhere. Oh. For the Mother Nature. Ladies, let's not have this conversation right now. Find one man to all of us. But guess what? We've got the important stuff. You can't have the fruit without us either. That's right. And I you guess. only need to have one male around like in in the side, in the corner. 
<laughs> yeah, we've had this conversation. That's a whole nother yeah. video. <laughs> but if you just have a date palm that's female by itself, it won't produce edible, delicious dates. You gotta have the, the you gotta have the male uh, pollen nearby. Okay. So you can take the pollen in the spring and you know like kind of brush it against the female flowers. Then you'll have plump, juicy, amazing dates and a more abundant harvest. Okay, mm -hmm. good deal. All yeah. right, so why don't we um, show, you guys missed him eating his apple. I just want you to know, Jake went into his grocery store. He started eating breakfast and he didn't share with me, but he gave me dessert. I gave you dessert first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so why don't we show people your oasis? Let's, let's well, take a look. For people that are coming in the live video, yes. who are you and what is Green Desert? What is, what is that? He put me on the spot. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> so Green Desert, we're all about a lifestyle. We're all about self-sufficiency. Of course, gardening plays a huge role in that, but it's about a lifestyle of just living green, helping the environment, helping ourselves when we're not depending on others. You made a great statement before talking about gardening and your refrigerator mm -hmm. versus going to the grocery store. And some yeah. people have that fear, like you said, oh no, I'm gonna get a disease or something, I'm doing something wrong. Well, let right? me say that again, because it was, it, was, it was muted earlier. Right. You know, when I first began gardening, I was growing things like kale and some carrots and some zucchini and uh, lettuces. And I was afraid to eat them because I thought, you know, <laughs> you know, oh, man, this might be disease crap. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in truth, because I'm used to opening the fridge like this and looking yeah. what's inside or going to a restaurant or going to the store. But in reality, the stuff growing in my garden is way better because my soil is better yep. and because I'm growing varieties of food that are rare that the stores don't carry. And you so, know exactly what you're putting in it. There, but, there's no questions. Exactly. But society has trained all of us yes. because the majority of people live in the cities now, not in farms. And society mm -hmm. has trained us all to go to the fridge and pay money to mm -hmm. buy the food and they have to go into the car to get to the job to make more money to buy more food. And it's like this vicious uh, cycle. <laughs> cycle, right. When you can supersede the cycle and just put the freaking seed in the dirt and grow it yourself. And then you I'm a Jake fan. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> so again, and guys, this is one thing about being self-sufficient. You don't have to do a whole lot. If gardening is the place you decide to start, it doesn't have to be like Jake's yard because a lot of us, we just don't have the space or time or whatever. But every little bit count and i'll tell you at green desert when we first started our garden when we started this whole thing it was small but it mm. motivates you yeah. if you start too big the problem is is you get overwhelmed and you get discouraged and you give up so start small and grow so yeah. let's let's look at what you've grown too and <laughs> hit the share button right now if you're Don't watching forget. and hit the like button because quita's uh, very manly husband Hanif is filming this. He's gonna see all the likes and the hearts and the wow faces go across the screen. Pretty colors. So, the pretty colors. The pretty colors. So we bring these videos to everybody for free. Yes. We don't get paid for this, really. No, and no. so um, hitting the share button is kind of saying thank you for doing these videos if you like them. If you so, like yeah. them, you'll like them. You're gonna like, especially we should. You want to go into Which the refrigerator first? Yeah, I mean, Let's go. it looks the worst it could look because it's coming out of the summer. But right now is the time of year when I begin to plant all my winter stuff. So as we're walking over here, let's start telling people about some of the things you want to plant right now, because really, at least in Arizona, this is the season to get excited about. This is when we yep. get all of our greens, our kale, our spinach, our lettuce. Let's go over and see some of the things you're planting. And so you guys know, you heard Jake um, talking this morning about Greg Peterson. Greg has a great planning calendar. You'll find it on our website. Go to greendesert.org. And it's great because it tells you what to plant, when to plant it, some of the concerns and things to look for, it's great. But right now, we're gonna tell you some of the things to plant. Now, like Jake said, we're coming out of the summer garden. He says this looks bad. Guys, do you think this looks bad? Show them. Well, normally there's a lot more food. <laughs> One thing I'll show you is like um, over here next to yeah. us, see how these leaves are starting to kind of go for the winter? Yes. This is a hot weather cucumber called an Armenian cucumber. Armenian. And that's how they should look when they're really ripe and ready to go. And um, and it's actually a melon, a serpent melon, but it tastes like cucumber. Mm -hmm. And these are amazing for hot weather in the summertime. So right now is the time of year when it finishes its production. I'm going to tear all these out actually today and put in my sugar snap peas and my beans, my pole beans. So am I shopping at the grocery store today? Because you, you're going to need something to do with these things. <laughs> Maybe, but I, I joke people that I am the vegan athlete and I need to have those calories uh -huh. back in this, yeah. in this thing. Guys, but, these are great. I love the Armenian you cucumbers. Guys grow them too. Yeah, we grow these, but... They're so big, you can do so much with them. You can make your relish and your pickles and all of that stuff. We have videos on that too if you want to know. But show us some more, Jake. You've got your basil here. This is all basil. And if you notice, it all looks different, right? Yes, yes. Um, I got these plants as little tiny seedlings from Suzanne Velarde with VillardiGardens.com. Yes, yes. If you go to Summer Winds Nursery or if you they go to um, 
VillardiGardens.com, you can find out where Suzanne has her plants. Okay. This is called a holy basil. It's like one that's worshipped in India. This one it's over here. Too. Yeah, these are actually tomatillos that are growing as volunteers in the basil patch. So all these yellow flowers will become a tomatillo, which is like a green tomato. Yes. Um, this is a, a cinnamon basil. has more of like a Thai, like uh, like Asian restaurant taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one here is called a serrated basil, and it's cool because the leaves are kind of all like serrated, like a oh, like yeah. a saw. See that? I like that. They're all yeah. choppy. Mm -hmm. Take that one. Mm -hmm. And then tell me, how does that one taste? Okay, I, I have to warn you guys. Oh, are you getting some Jake, ants? he has this thing with ants, and they're really, really friendly to Jake. But they don't like me. <laughs> they're not attacking me. <laughs> they're not attacking they him love at you. all. <laughs> they love me. I was here the other day, and I still have bites from these ants. So I'm sorry that I'm dancing and stuff. It's Make his a, ants. Let me see if there's any bite you. We should trans. We'll, we'll, let me take this, and we'll transition out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As we eat our basil. Now, we're but this one right here. So how does that? Uh, take take uh, like, like a little nibble of that one. It's good, like a pesto taste, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, now, that'd be good for pasta too. Totally. And I'll take a little nibble of this one. It's also basil. But what does it taste like? Basil with 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 what? Was it some cinnamon or what is? No, it's mint. You're telling me I don't know my taste. I don't what know. What is it? Well, it depends on what you taste. Well, I still have the taste from the other one, so I'm trying to figure. I it out. I taste a little bit of lemon. Oh, it is lemon. It's lemon. <laughs> lemon, mint. <laughs> it's all the same. Cinnamon. It's lemon. But here's the thing: you <laughs> have so basil. many. Think about with cooking, I mean, you can do a salad with this, but think about all the flavors you can bring out of this. You don't even need seasonings. Again, exactly. saving money because you've got your own seasonings here. And then behind your husband here, if we go over this way, uh, this is a patch that's full of mint. Mint. And so mint tends to take over, right? So I gave it this bed all by itself. And I never even plant this. It just comes back. It kind of like breathes throughout the year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the summertime, it'll exhale. In the wintertime, it'll inhale. And it just kind of kind of gets more thick and whatever else as the seasons go. So this is a spearmint. Now, for those of you that are new to gardening, mint is a great way to start because we all want to feel good like we're actually accomplishing something. Mint is so easy to grow. Look at this. Like Jake said, it takes over. So this is a great thing for beginner gardeners. Mm -hmm. Just small containers you can start with, right? Absolutely. Or just like a pot. Yes. And people always ask me, how do I use all the food we use? Well, one thing I like to do is I love making like Vietnamese spring rolls. So I go to one of the Asian stores and I buy the rice paper, like the circular rice paper, mm -hmm. and you just dip it in water and it becomes like a like a seaweed kind of wrap. Right. And you put your cucumber, your mint, and your basil in it, roll it up, maybe some carrots, mm -hmm. and then take like a like a peanut Asian dipping sauce. Mm. Great. That's a so whole good. meal from the garden. Exactly. There you go. All right, so let's talk about some things that you're planting right now. Again, we told you you got your greens, so you've got spinach, you've got kale. What else are we planting? Uh, come over here. I got these, uh, if we go a little deeper, past the ants. Past the ants. Oh, wait, wait. All the sweet peppers. Yes. So okay. this is the, so sweet peppers want the summertime. So this is how they look at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. And over here too, just we have a patch here loaded with peppers. And the cool thing is, see this is one plant, but there's green, orange, and red. And I always yes. pick them when they're, when they're red because that means that they're fully ripe. And now not only is it more nutritious because it's fully ripe, but it's also sweeter. I'm having I'm having breakfast too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how good that is. Oh, these are yummy. I had them. That one's the spiciest pepper in the world. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he did not just do that to me. <laughs> Guys, I have to share with the camera guy. There you go. It's sweet. It is. You can eat this by itself. Is that so yummy? Mm -hmm. It looks like a regular bell pepper, but it doesn't taste like a regular bell pepper. Okay, what else are we planting? Right so, now for this winter in, garden. In the ground. Yes. If you notice, some of, some of my beds, if Hanif will show, mm -hmm. are kind of bare, right? Mm -hmm. They just have the soil. Mm -hmm. I've already, yeah, I've already prepped them uh, for the winter. Okay. So this one right here has got a new layer of worm castings, a new layer of compost, and this stuff, which is coconut core. And I also put azomite rock dust minerals in the soil, and now it's ready to plant him. I'm gonna put a bunch of carrots inside here. Okay. Probably this this weekend. Okay. And speaking of soil, just so you guys know, you don't necessarily have to pay. There are places all around the valley where you can get compost and things. We we told you guys the city of Tempe, they offer that for free. Yep. A lot of landscaping places offer that for free. So always look for sources to keep your wallet full. You can build it yourself at home. Yes. And Jake, you've got some seeds here that you saved. Jake says <laughs> he do. was saying that second year of your garden, it can be free. You don't need to buy seeds because after your first year 
you save the seeds and let's see what you got in here. So in these packages like this, this is my favorite seed company called the Baker Creek Seed Company. Mm -hmm. you dropped and, it. Oh, there it is right there. So this is from the Baker Creek Seed Company and this is Malabar spinach. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plant this one somewhere where the spinach can climb because Malabar spinach is a climbing spinach. But this seed company, the Baker Creek, it's at rareseeds.com, my favorite mail order seed company. Now, now Malabar though is that's a summer spinach, right? Are we doing that now, or does that grow year round? I think year round. I think any any wow. season. Wow! Yeah. I love that. I didn't know that. Now these are seeds that I have harvested. So my wife Pam and I, we buy little Manila envelopes like this, and we put our seeds inside of there. So we've got like from the previous season, we got some dill, and then Pam puts the date on it, the date we actually harvested the seed. Mm -hmm. We got some broccoli. We got some green speckled lettuce Yum. called trout lettuce. Lettuce is good right now. We got the daikon radishes. And we've got the cilantro. Mm -hmm. So we harvested these seeds, but to be honest, the dill and the cilantro, it just pops up on its own now every season on its own. So guys, remember, keep the questions coming because this is your chance to start your garden for free. If <laughs> these are, get your questions in. Do you have any tips as far as when people are planting, how to plant? You know, like you were saying with your cilantro, do you just throw it and hope it grows or? Let's, 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 let's do it right now. Let's do it. <laughs> so this is just a couple of, a couple of broccoli seeds from last year. Just, just a couple. Okay. So one way you can do it, these little green guys right here. See, I, I put the husks in there too. I don't, I don't mind. Well, and the question a lot of people have is how deep do I plant it? How much yeah. dirt do I put on it? I don't want to make it hard for the plant to come through, you know, to sprout. Yeah. So what do you do? Normally, whatever the diameter of the seed is, however big the seed is, mm -hmm. you want to put it that deep under the soil. Oh, that's a good rule so, of thumb. See how small those guys are? Yes. If you want to kill them, then put them <laughs> under the ground that, that, that deep. <laughs> These guys just need to bob watch. You guys see my hand? Uh-huh. I'm just going to like go like that. Done. <laughs> now, who says gardening is hard that's when it. you can do that? So that's it. you got it. If you want to kill them, plant them deep. <laughs> now, yes. Now, for instance, if I have a squash plant, like this yes. is a dark zucchini squash, mm -hmm. heirloom variety. Mm -hmm. These guys are bigger, right? Mm -hmm. So they got to go a little deeper. But okay. again, deeper is not better. You know, if you put it under the ground too deep, it will rot and, and die. Oh. So there's the seed right right there. So a zucchini, I just put it about that diameter. See, I see it. Mm -hmm. And I'll just kind of like go like that. And that's how deep I put it, about a half inch. Oh, that's easy enough. And so you don't it. have to do any digging and shoveling and hard work and sweating and all that good stuff. Okay. Here, come on out. I'll show you. What I would say is that if you're going to grow your garden in the ground mm -hmm. and you've got hard clay in the Phoenix area, this hard clay. Yes. And you're, um, you know, it's compact and you, nothing will permeate. It's like your driveway. It's like mm -hmm. hard. I would then till that up. Okay. And initially I would break up all that hard clay and I would mix in some good, some good compost. Okay. But if you already have compost in your raised beds, don't dig it up. Leave it go because the microbes will stay intact and then just put good worm castings on top of that. And if you guys go to jakemace.com, I have uh, some of the azomite rock dust powder you can get that will remineralize your soil. Okay. Let's go this final thing. And we got a question. In. Oh, we got a Hello. question. Hey, how many people are in the live feed? 15. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. What grows well in containers from Rachel? Cilantro does well. The mint does really well, like we said. What have you grown in containers? Things um, that take everything. over. Everything can grow in containers, really. Right. But what tends to do really well, I think, are like, like a zucchini plant. Here's why. Because zucchini plant, one zucchini plant will produce a whole bunch of zucchinis, right? Now I'm standing in that. Let's go over here. <laughs> <laughs> let's go over in the shade over by the moringa because we'll end over here. Okay, let's take you guys yeah, over. Yeah, we're going to uh, end. Oh, where, where do you want to go? Yeah. So we're going to end it really soon here. Let people come throughout the day and they can continue asking questions and all of that good stuff. Because the battery is done. Here, come over here. We'll go in front of the in front of the cactus. Okay. All right. So we're talking about things you can grow in containers. So the short answer, as you heard Jake say, you can pretty much grow anything in containers. But there are some things that are better. And like a zucchini plant is better in containers. And here's why. Because one zucchini plant, just one plant, tends to become a huge bush and produce a ton of zucchinis. Okay. And so if you put that zucchini plant in your garden with the other plants, it might overtake them. Like mint like mint. So putting things like mint or zucchini in a pot works well because the plant can bush out into an air space and it can be by itself and be um, as big as it wants to be. Let's get a couple more questions. Okay. In. Okay. okay. Right. Teresa wants yes. to know, can you do cucumbers in containers? Oh, see, I probably wouldn't recommend it. You've got all the vines and they get so big. 
cucumbers I wouldn't do in a container. Not that it won't grow, but it won't give you your most success. Would you agree? Yeah, because cucumbers want to climb a trellis. Right. Um, and cucumbers are a little more sensitive than a zucchini plant. And if you guys live in the Phoenix area, um, if you grow in containers, what happens in the summertime? Those containers get freaking hot. Really hot. And mm -hmm. so um, what I would say is uh, a cucumber plant is a little tougher to do in a container, but it can be done. It can be done, yeah. but we wouldn't suggest it. What All else right. Tomatoes, zucchini. These are great things to put in Mint, containers. Mint. Things that like to yeah. take over. Because All right. How about from Amy Shaw, if I'm pronouncing it right, I'm sorry if I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> how often do you fertilize the vegetables and fruit trees? You're um, the fruit tree guy. I don't fertilize at all. Okay. Zero. All right. The, what I do instead of fertilizing is I, I build the soil like Mother Earth wants you to do. I layer the worm castings and then the compost and then the coconut core and then the azomite rock dust minerals. I'm constantly layering those four things. Rock dust minerals mm -hmm. um, as well as the coconut core, the worm castings and the compost okay. over and over and over again throughout the entire year. All right, I hope that and answered. That yeah. is going to provide a microbe civilization beneath the soil that will feed your soil and make it alive. Oh, okay. I actually don't agree with fertilizing in that way, unless it's like, unless you're going to fertilize with like compost tea. If you guys take a bucket and you mm -hmm. brew some compost in that bucket with an air stone and then water your plants with the compost tea, mm -hmm. that's a good fertilizer. But normal fertilizers, I don't use at all. I just build the soil with the worm castings, compost, coconut ore, and uh, rock dust. And that out. helps you keep the cost down as well, and it's natural. Oh, look, look at who's peeking through. You see this guy? <laughs> He's trying to say hi to the live feed. <laughs> Hello. He's trying to get out. <laughs> uh, good okay. luck with that. How about another yeah. question? Okay. Go ahead. Cheapest way to create trellis from Dean. Hi, Dean. <laughs> what I like is going to a hardware store like in town here we have the big box stores yeah and go into the into the sand and concrete section where all the rebar is and they have these concrete trellises um, that uh, you can get if you want to tell me your answer really quick I'm gonna get one really fast he's going to get us one How you guys it's so <laughs> yeah because I do all the building at home you got the guy behind the camera mm -hmm. doing the building I just talk about it and I smile a whole lot Jake is actually grabbing one Dean to show you what it is he's talking about to let you guys know it's getting hot and we're sweating so keep the questions coming and then once we end this live feed keep them coming throughout the day because we'll come back and keep answering the questions so it's not going to be all over look at what jake has so these are at the big box stores it's a four foot by eight foot in the concrete section this is like five bucks okay and then i use these because they're pretty strong and you could um grow anything up this sugar snap peas cucumbers mm -hmm. Your Malabar spinach, your, your pole beans, or you can lay it on your raised bed flat like this. There you go. And then it's got all the squares and just put one plant per square. I like it. So just for five bucks, really cheap way to get a trellis. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go with another question. Okay. Please. Um, Lorraine wants to know, what about sweet potatoes in wine barrels? Wine barrels. That would be pretty. I might Everybody wants to grow in containers. Yeah. Yeah, what is this about the containers? For Space. Sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes, I think, would be fine. I mean, they still, they take over. Yeah. They definitely take over. But again, the soil with them, what would you suggest? Like a normal potato, you can put in a regular compost, azomite, coconut core, worm casting blend. And regular potatoes will grow a nice looking plant. Sweet potatoes like to climb out. Right. So if you put a sweet potato plant in a wine barrel and you have good soil and it's going to be a thriving plant, it's going to grow everywhere and it's going to be very hard to move that container. So if yeah. the container is going to stay still and not move, I would say go for it. But if you're going to move it, I would say put the sweet potato in the ground yeah. and let it sprawl out. And not only that, if it's in that container, everything around that container, the sweet potato leaves are going to take over because it's going to go and go and go and it'll just keep going. Did you see my shirt with my, uh, my soil recipe on it for trees? Uh-oh. <laughs> this is, um, I was... Let's read it. This is what I put in the soil when I plant a new tree. Two shovels full of biodynamic active compost and bottom of hole. And then? 20% native soil, 20% composted wood chips, 20% worm castings, 20% lava sand, 20% small lava rock, one or two shovels full of rock dust minerals, five tablespoons of, I'm going to let you have that word. Of micro mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza. Okay, Jake, I don't even know what that is. You're going to go to jakemace.com. <laughs> And you're going to go to the gardening store and look up the write-up we have for mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is 
the underground microbial civilization that helps the tree share nutrients. And so we have a $7 powder you can get to, to, to boost that okay. civilization when you first plant a fruit tree. All right, back to questions. Okay. Another question, all right. Okay, from Jay, what's the best way to grow olive plants and that's when do you plant? Olives and when do you plant? Now that's one I haven't planted, Jay. Olive tree? Olive tree. <laughs> um, yeah, so Jay was testing you. Yeah, he, yeah, he, was. he was seeing if you knew your stuff. <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> that does. I've been saying recently that any food that you hear talked about in the Bible, any tree or, or plant you hear in the Bible is going to work well in your garden. So things like figs and olives or pomegranates, mm -hmm. amazing, right? So olive trees can be one of the most amazing fruit trees for home gardeners. Get a female one, so you can one that produces fruits. Ladies, here we go again. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that male coming in. Okay, female olive tree. And okay. give them some room because they do get a little bit bushy. Okay. And if I have uh, two fruiting olives that produce incredible olives, and you can harvest them, you can cure them at home, and you can have your own cured olives. I mean, like. I mean, like, I'm really excited about that. Like, dates <laughs> and the olives are incredible stuff, especially the pomegranates, too. So these guys are going to be ready in about a month. So think about that. You know, Jake has kind of given yeah, you a mothers. little taste mm -hmm. of Mother Nature and volunteer gardening. A lot of us feel like we can't do it. It's too hard. But some things just grow on their own. I mean, literally, we have all kinds of things around our yard, around your yard, that grows on its own. So don't let that fear of it not working stop you from doing it. Another question? Yep. Our brother Dean strikes back with another question. <laughs> Best shade cloth? You're a great moderator. He is <laughs> good, right? We got to use him more for that. Go shade to, cloth. Go to Arizona Bag Company and get their 30%. They make you spend $50 of a minimum, but you get a lot of shade cloth. And then you want the 30% from Arizona Bag Company. If you need a lot more shade, just layer it twice. Okay. Yep. And, and he's not getting paid to say that. He really likes this company. Dude, that, that company... <laughs> is an interesting company, I gotta say. I like their shade cloth, but um, they don't wanna work a deal. And they also, um, it's always a very interesting experience going there, I have to say. Go to Arizona Bag Company and get some shade <laughs> cloth. 30% off, that's a deal. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. And $50 of shade cloth will give you shade, a normal gardener will give you years of shade cloth. Or you can share, remember we're a community. Share, so yeah. share, go in together. They also, have a, they also have a discount bin out front, the office. They sometimes have a, a cheaper roll in a discount bin. Okay. All right. All righty. We have one more question. One more question. And well, actually two more. How do you know it's a female olive tree? Uh, ask the gardener who grew it because um, you can graft a female branch off a female tree and it will be female. Or if it's ever produced olives. Okay. You know it's a That's female. a good way yeah. to know. Okay. Any tips for growing carrots? From, excuse me, I gotta see if I can get the name. The sun is blocking it, but from, from John. Wants to get some John. Is John, tips. is John here in the Phoenix area? I John, John, are you in Phoenix? Phoenix? What's John's last name? Vorsak. Is he in the Phoenix area? I'm wondering. John Vorsak, are you in the Phoenix area? If you're in the Phoenix area, I would say one trick is to plant them right now. Yes. What I find is that if you yes. plant them in the summertime, they don't like that so much. Yeah. Um, if you plant them yeah. right now in the fall, they'll get to be a good size by November, December. And then what will happen is let them over winter. Let them stay in your raised bed over the winter time and harvest them around March, April, mm -hmm. and they'll be delicious. And I'll say too, with carrots, a lot of people get discouraged. They don't sprout as fast as your lettuce, your spinach, that type of thing. So don't get discouraged and think they're not coming. Yeah. Sometimes the carrots for them to start coming through, it's gonna take about two to three weeks, right? But I love my carrots. Like when I'm harvesting <laughs> my carrots in March and April, yes. I mean, one of my, my friend John Kohler doesn't like to grow carrots because they take too much space in the garden and they're too cheap in the, in the store. I disagree with him on that fact. I love growing carrots because it's so satisfying to go and okay. pull the carrot out and then go juice a carrot or put it in a stew or whatever. I, I love the satisfaction. Plus, I grow like six different varieties mm -hmm. of heirloom, like the rare varieties of carrots. And I love, I love carrots it. too because you can freeze them. I love growing things yeah. that you can freeze. And think about this. If you are gardening, don't grow things that are just pretty. Grow things that you're going to use. That's what's going to save you money. So yep. I love carrots because, like, we're vegetarian. So for kids' lunches and stuff, you need that. So we're going to kind of wrap things up here, guys. If you have more questions, keep them coming. Don't forget, share the video. Jake, where are you going? I, I can't up. keep a hold of this guy. He's I'm going to bring out the start of the video. To say bye. But, again, Jake's page. Go to that gardening page. Tell them the page, the group. Urban Gardening in Arizona. Urban Gardening in Arizona. That is a but great community site, too. The best way to get me is to go on YouTube and, and go to Vegan Athlete or type in, U, uh, type in Jake Mace Garden. 
on YouTube. And you'll see we've done some videos with Jake. Green yep. Desert TV is our YouTube page. You'll be so many things. You know, we talked about our mini and cucumbers. We've got recipes. We've got it all. So share the video, like the pages. What else? And we'll come back into the comments in the next yes. over the next hour. We'll answer questions with this. With this, you saw the technology. Bye, guys. Give them a last little view of. Of Jake's Oasis, you got something else. Lastly, just before we click off here, you guys also do aquaponics, right? We do do aquaponics. I yes. do Jacoponics, which is just taking my pond water and putting it on my tropical trees. But oh, that's good. you guys grow, you guys grow plants in your fish water. Yes, it's yeah. awesome. We've got videos on that too. So, so ask an aquaponics that. question, and Quita and her husband Hanif can come in there and answer some aquaponics. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh -huh.